I'm Dragan Savic, representing uh, today uh, the Water Distribution Systems Analysis History Project. The purpose of this project is to document the history of water distribution systems analysis and an important part um, of it is a series of interviews with uh, researchers, engineers, modelers and practitioners who have made significant contributions to the water distribution systems analysis. Our interview today is uh, with Professor Xuming Liu uh, from um, the Jinghua University in um, Beijing in China. He has been uh, in the forefront of the water distribution systems analysis uh, since uh, the 90s and continues to make significant contributions uh, to the field. Uh, the interview is being conducted um, on the 3rd of September 2015 in Leicester, the UK, um, during the 13th uh, Computing and the Control for the Water Industry Conference. Xu Ming, um, you've been um, involved in water distribution systems analysis for a number of years now, uh, and I was wondering if you can tell us about your uh, early days work and how you chose uh, to move into this area. Well, uh, thank you, Dragon, uh, for the question. Uh, well, I started this area uh, in 1993 when I was a student in the university. And my supervisor was involved in a design project. And at that moment, it was my first time to know what a discipline system. And we tried to design the project, the, especially for the, uh, the, the size of the pipe. And then later, uh, after I joined the Tsinghua University, and I was involved in teaching and some consulting uh, work as well, and also research. But if you think about the water discipline system, uh, what I have done, I think, in two areas. The first one is design, especially for optimization. The uh, second one is for the management from the water utility, water utility side. For example, uh, in the uh, 2005, and although I was in the UK at that moment, but uh, I got some uh, contact with Tsinghua University, and they had a project for designing a uh, new network because you know China is in the process of urbanization and a lot of huge demand for uh, design new network and previously we, they just uh, copy from another city to, to, to from one city to another city just like making bread and there's no research in, 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 in those process but later they realize the pipe diameter is too big if you just uh, based on some experience or some example cities. So it, they introduced the idea of optimization design for the network, especially for the pipe size. And luckily I was involved in that project uh, with the knowledge I, I got from the UK and I used my knowledge to help them to fit that project. And later after I joined their team and they realized only for the design is not enough. And some model which can help people to understand the uh, hydraulics in the pipe system, especially for the management, for example, for the pressure control and how to have a better or optimal uh, pump scheduling to reduce the pressure and which can reduce the uh, leakage rate as well. And they try to use the model uh, to do this kind of work. But in the early days, those kind of models are steady state and they built the model use some uh, nodal demand which is collected from the building office and which is a steady number to be honest and but that is the early stage but in recent years this one moved forward a big a big step to real-time model uh, in some water utilities they have very good scanner data uh, because different from the UK water utility, in Chinese city, normally they have a huge, not huge, a large percentage of water used for industry. And for, you know, uh, household use, maybe just 30 to 40 percent. So you have nearly 60 to 70 percent is from industry use. For industry use, we call them big customer and they have online water flow meter. So those meters can transfer the water flow data in every 10 uh, minutes or maybe five minutes that will give you the background information to help you to build up a real-time model because your demand, your nodal demand, the real number coming every 10, 10 minutes. But previously, this is just, a, you know, just a old data, it's steady data. So I think China is moving, especially for water industry, moving from uh, you know, steady data, uh, 
stable model to this kind of real-time model. But this just in several uh, leading water utilities, not the whole country, are uh, having this kind of advantage. Some uh, small water utilities still just use the water model for design, although they want to get this kind of model to help them to in the process of decision making, especially for the, uh, uh, you know, try to reduce the pressure, but that doesn't work very well, to be honest. And they realize they have to move to the, uh, you know, uh, steady, uh, sorry, uh, real-time modeling. But I think there's a new problem, uh, you know, uh, appearing in this area, because for real-time model, you have to trust the number of the data from the sensor is correct, but that is not always the case. People always think they work in a good condition, but sometimes you get a lot of noise for your, own, for your online sensors, and people just uh, leave it, think it is correct. And that will have a significant negative impact on your real-time model. But I think if we want to move to the next stage, this is something we have to overcome, have to get a solution for these kind of things. So I think uh, first is design, moving from you know, just experience, coping just like bread making, and to optimal uh, design. And second area, I think, is management. People realize modeling is very important things, especially for the water utility manager, because previously they just rely on Mr. Big Person, for example. He knows everything about your network, exact location, but if he retires or he's on business trip, and that will be in you know, a big trouble because nobody can take it over. But now they have a better solution, try to use the model. But the problem is you have to have a very accurate model to do this kind of things. Steady model is not enough. We have to move forward to real-time modeling. I think this is what I have done, have been involved in the past several years in my university. Can you tell us a little bit more on um, your um, uh, current research? I know you have a big lab. Yeah. And, um, you're doing quite a lot on water quality and yes. water energy yes. nexus. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Well, for water quality, um, you know, in China we have the water standard, especially for the uh, chlorine decay, as the chlorine residual concentration at the end of the network, especially in the tap. I think it may be different from the UK. In China, water utility, the responsibility for water utility is not the end of the, uh, you know, in the outside of the building, it is in the tap. You have to guarantee the water from the tap is safe enough. So uh, in recent years, uh, the water utility have a lot to challenge for water quality, especially if you look at the news, turn on the TV, some days you can heard something about uh, contamination in the water source in China. So they have a huge pressure on their shoulder how to guarantee the water quality is good enough when they reach the household, the, the customer. So the problem is, how to understand the quality change within, within the pipe system? This is the first question. Second one, how to find the best place or the optimal location to monitor the, your water quality? That is what we call you know, the sensor placement, the best place. So in my lab, we have done a lot of this kind of research. First, we try to introduce or try to add some you know, pollution or contaminant in the water, in the pipe system, try to understand how the water quality change within the uh, pipe system. And then we try to understand how to find the best place where we can monitor the water quality to understand how the, how the water quality changes within the pipe system in 24 hours, for example. This is one area we are doing. Second one is for water energy. You know, uh, again, it's different from other countries. In China, the water pressure requirement by the regulation is for six floor buildings. In the UK, maybe 10 meters is enough, but in China, it's normally 28 meters. That will introduce a lot of energy consumption for the water within the, fi the final 50 meters that is in your building. Because if you travel to Beijing, travel to Shanghai, those kind of big cities in China, we have a lot of very tall buildings, maybe taller than 50 floor, maybe 100 floors. For those kind of buildings, we use, uh, we call it secondary water supply. Normally, previously, we use a big tank, that is a service tank, to store the water. And then when you have the demand, you use a pump to, uh, to transfer the water to the customer. But in recent years, people realized if we have this kind of uh, tank, we call sometimes call service tank or maybe buffer tank, the good point is which can you know, uh, increase the security for the water supply. But the bad point is it will introduce higher energy demand. 
and we try to work out you know the percentage of water dem uh, the the energy demand for one cubic meter water from the treatment plant to the customer we realized for a 10 floor building uh, 70 percent can be consumed in the final 50 meters for energy in terms of energy and I know in the United States they work out the uh, the percentage of energy consumption for water industry in the whole country is about 2.5 if my memory is correct and in China we also did the similar things we tried to work out for different cities for example in Beijing normally 0.7 percent of the energy was used for water treatment and water transfer that doesn't include the final 50 meters water energy and the energy consumption and we realized this is a you know, a significant, uh, you know, percentage for the energy consumption. And one possibility to reduce the energy consumption for the final 50 meter is using, you know, without the tank, we try to link with the uh, uh, service pipe directly with a pump. But the problem is we have to guarantee the pressure doesn't drop significantly and that we will need a special device to avoid. So this is two areas we are currently doing. One is for water quality, second one is for the water energy in excess. We try to understand how to save the energy consumption of water supply. Can you tell us a little bit more of uh, the relationship uh, between the academia and the industry in terms of water distribution systems analysis? How open the industry is for the innovation that, uh, um, you, innovations that you are working on and um, where do you see uh, the major um, opportunities and major challenges? This is a very difficult question to answer, to be honest. But I think uh, my understanding is, you know, if for, for, for academia people, without support from industry, we can do nothing. The second one is the water industry, industry is a very, you know, closed system, very, cl very old in industry area, you know, the, they have their own people, uh, not well uh, educated, but they have a lot of experience. And, but they also realize it is very important to have new blood from academia to tell them how to use modern technology to, to help them to f solve the problem. After I joined the School of Environment in Tsinghua University, I also realized it's not easy to do these kind of things. But luckily, we have a big change in recent years. That should thanks for the uh, you know, the, uh, the Chinese uh, funding agency. Uh, because previously, if you want to uh, get some data from the water utility, they feel this is their own business, that's own charge. They, do not, they don't want to open too much to the uh, academia. And that is one thing. But in recent years, the Chinese government tried to, you know, have a special uh, funding. This is called uh, Water Major Project. That is, you know, the, the funding scale is very huge. Uh, if you compare to the previous uh, uh, fundings. And they have a special uh, requirement. If you are a water utility, uh, they will encourage you to have this kind of proposal and get the funding and do some research. Not the academia people leading the research. They just uh, support uh, this kind of research from technical side. But the, uh, uh, you know, the, the principal uh, researcher have to be from the water industry. That changed a lot because the you know, water utility have the responsibility because when they sign the agreement with the government for the funding, uh, they realize this is their own business and they need some extra help from the academic field and they will lead the research and they can get the help from the academic scientists. So this is a big change. That also gives us a very good opportunity because previously it is difficult for us to get this kind of support from water industry. They thought that's their own business. But now they thought they have to rely on you know, this kind of modern technology, optimization for example, because those people in the water, water industry, normally they get the education in early 80s, maybe 90s, at that moment, Optimization is uh, you know, just a new thing, but in recent years, a huge you know, improvement in this area, a lot of papers published. So they have more, uh, you know, uh, they feel this is their own things, but they need help from the uh, academia. So I, I feel quite happy because I don't want, I don't need, you know, previously I have to persuade them, but now they persuade me to join them. So that's a big change, I think. Very good. Finally, yeah. I'd like to ask you um, kind of to um, look um, into the future, next 20, 30 years, mm. and tell us what do you think 
um, the major challenges for water distribution systems analysis uh, would be and with uh, your particular knowledge of uh, China and uh, management of water resources in China. Okay, thank you. Um, well, before I came to this conference this year, I, you know, there's one question in my brain, because in the last uh, 20 years, for example, a lot of people in this area focus on water model, especially for the uh, water distribution system, this kind of modeling things. And, you know, if we want to model something, we have to know the demand from nodal demand, for example. And in recent years, we have a lot of sensors. Thanks for the sensor industry, it is cheaper and cheaper. So people have the possibility to monitor the water distribution system from the sensor data. They know exactly what is there. And one reason we use the model is try to understand where, you know, the place we don't have the sensors. But if you have enough sensors, we can understand more about the hydraulics and the water quality in the pipes. So I think there's a there's a balance between you know, the modeling technique and data demand technique. In the future, maybe in the next 20 years, um, I think it is difficult to say which one is better. Maybe my understanding is not correct. And one time is if you have real-time model, that will give you much more higher and better confidence about your model. And people can rely on your model to get real-time knowledge for the water design system. Another side is if you have better sensors, enough sensors at you know essential place, you also can get similar knowledge for the uh, water distribution system. So which one is better? This is, this is something I think maybe in the next 10 or 20 years. Another thing is previously we always focus on the pipe system. We always focus on leakage uh, you know, reduction. But I think recently I realized we have another challenge things because Water distribution system is a lifeline for a city. And in, in, in May, I think 18th of May, in a city uh, in China, Hefei, it is in the middle part of China, they have an accident. What happened is, uh, you know, the one pipe, when they dig out, we, they realize one pipe uh, has burst. And the road collapsed. And they try to find out what's the reason for that one. Maybe just an even deposition for after many days rain. But they realize this is a challenge thing for the city manager. Because if there's a gas pipe there, that could happen, could burst as well if this kind of thing happens. That will introduce a huge uh, you know, challenge for the city manager. So for the water utility, they always think about how to reduce the leakage, how to find the place the leaks uh, you know, locates. But from the city manager, they want to reduce this kind of risk, not only just for water leakage, but also for other pipelines, for the, for the gas, or maybe for the, uh, the, the bridge as well. So recently, uh, there's a new project in China. They try to merge different data from different systems because previously, water is water, gas is gas, bridge is bridge. It is not in the same level. It's not in the same database. Now they try to merge them together, try to get the uh, modeling things for the uh, pipeline or, or, and also for the modeling things for the uh, gas line, try to think about how to reduce the risk, not only for water, but also it's from the perspective of the city. Uh, security, I think. Maybe this is another, uh, you know, demand in the next 20 years. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.